no friends to unapologetically fiery young women. You, Haley Van Lith, the Louisville transfer. Flaugé Johnson having a terrific Martin and Gabby Marshall, they have spent so many years together. And then Sydney of Folter match is underway in Albany. Outstanding offensive rebounding team. Clark connects. NCAA tournament play for Clark, passing Diana Taurasi most all. Van Lith, who has the defensive assignment tonight on Clark, goes behind the screen. You can never. Getting up in a 2-3 zone. When Angel Reese got the ball, she was surrounded by. The talented freshman whips it across. Moro's jumper. No. Re and Lisa Bluter felt like LSU may put more opportunities for Clark to score in this game. And that, that's exactly what I have. Find Stolke who will lay it in. Floor for Iowa. She is an outstanding rim runner. Morrow, so good. Clark back door. Martin, easy two. Tier Poa getting ready to check in for LSU as Johnson can't hit the three. The Clark to Martin, and Martin just couldn't finish it. She has more size and length. Clark, you bet. Johnson dumps it in. Morrow lays it home. Defense will work. Here's Clark dishing out. When they're going against the zone, she Clark bounces off. Martin fires and hit. Keep in the early going. They lead the nation average over 11 threes per game. Good find, Williams. And yes, she does get a folder running the other way. Lays it in. Clark again with the get ahead. Surrounded, hey, finds Poa. Her three is good. So don't you go. Not so that time. Finds Rebound Paula, secured by Morrow. Angel good. Reese is a Williams can't Clark. finish. Reese Not that time. does. Hey. Williams can't finish. Clark Reese. has scored or assisted does. on 15 of 7. She got it. Gabby Marshall perhaps sees her early shots go in. It can be huge for her. A key. Clark. Not that time. Rebound secured by Morrow. Angel Reese is a very good passer out of the post. You're gonna get better looks if you her touches. Williams can't finish. Reese does. Angel Reese, a prolific offense rebounder. Clark has scored or assisted 15 of 17 Iowa points. Here is Marshall, a deep three. She got it. Gabby Marshall, perhaps more than any player on the Iowa team, can be streaky. And when she sees her early shots go in, it can be huge for her. A key that Lisa Bluter has pointed out to us multiple times. Last game, Marshall was 4-5 from three. Comes with the double here. Johnson to the corner. Williams three is good. Now LSU starting to stroke it from deep. Mikhail Williams was, has been a very good three-point shooter all season for LSU, particularly early in the year. Clark back door. Martin feeds Stolke. Center of the lane. A Holter's three. She got it. The shooting in this opening quarter. Incredible. Iowa now five of seven from three. Poa lobbied him beautifully to Morrow for the fish. Reese and Morrow so good as a tandem on the interior. Early in this game, LSU was settling for too many outside looks without getting the bigs touches. That's changed since the timeout. Clark stops, takes, can't hit. Reese rebound. Already four rebounds, two assists for Angel Reese. Williams lets it fly. That one's off. Reese left alone, lays it in. It's really hard at times to box after when you are in a zone. And that time, Stokey was boxing up Morrow, but no one had a body on Reese. 23 21, Iowa in front. 3 30 go in the first quarter. Clark looking to turn the corner, lays it in. Plus foul. Kate Clark has started this game beautifully in terms of her balance, getting threes from the perimeter and an opportunity for threes in the paint. Watch me. 
Why do dermatologists... Of that timeout, it was 17 to 9, and Angel Reese was very strong in her communication. Stop taking dumb shots. She did not like the shot selection. Since that timeout, that emotional outburst, she got what she wanted. Those teammates went to the post players. Anissa Morrow, Angel's got her points. Very clear communication from their leader that they listened to, and they have responded. And not just about the post players being able to touch the ball to score. They've made the right decisions to pass back out. Clark completes the three-point play. 11 points, three assists in his first for Caitlin Clark. While LSU, after starting two for seven, is seven for its last non from the floor. They dump it into Reese. Reese bodies inside. Easy finish for Angel Reese. Iowa might need to send a double before the catch happens because that's just too easy for Angel Reese. Here's Clark. Clark, a little too tricky. Fortune. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Sydney of Alter as Morrow sold the contest. Morrow did a really good job here of selling this because the drive comes, gets there. And <laughs> Mulkey about to throw out her back. Or rip the back of her jacket. <laughs> Johnson dumps it down. Reese again. Reese can't finish. Here comes Fearbach. Fearbach picks up her dribble but gets it to Clark. And Liff has not come back in. This is replaced by Poez. Williams trying to save it, but was out of bounds. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. I know we all have this stick together tonight. Remember, we have another one Friday on ESPN. And then Sunday on ABC. South Carolina undefeated South Carolina way to play NC State the winner of Iowa LSU will play the winner of USC UConn which follows this game here on ESPN Clark trying to get it in does to Stolke Clark to Stolke back it out she does here's Clark Racing, taking, can't hit, long rebound, flagged down by Morrow. Clark, two for five from three. Here's Reese. Couldn't get it to her. Denied initially by Martin. Morrow's jumper, no, and Iowa will live with that shot. Martin running the floor, stops, lays, can't hit, and the rebound ends up. With LSU, here is Reese Clark back there, and Reese lays it in. Angel Reese having a tremendous opening quarter. Eight points, five rebounds, and two assists for Reese. She's the last six Iowa points. And now Reese comes up with a seal. Reese all the way in to give LSU the lead. A soft telegraph pass from Clark, and Reese went to work as Poe gets called for her second personal. Angel Reese just getting it done on both ends of the floor. Defensively, jumps a root, gets out, able to get an easy two in transition. And what I love is she challenges her teammates in timeout to get her more touches. And when she does, she has certainly lived up to it. Clark goes back door to the corner. Marshall, back iron, no. Morrow just towers over a falter and then travels. And it will stay with Iowa. That's one of the things Lisa Bluter mentioned. She said, our post players have to box out because we cannot out jump unless you have to have good position. She also said we can't turn the ball over because those are possessions and we know they may win the possession battle with rebounds. Clark trying to get it in. And that's going to be a five second violation as Iowa does indeed turn it over. LSU spent a lot of time working on defending Iowa inbounds at their shoot-around earlier today. Here's Van Lith back in after Poa picked up her second. 
Van Lith have been under the weather. Johnson along two is good. Faje Johnson having a massive tournament. Clark looking to respond. Backs away and throws it away. Reese on another steal. Reese leaves it. Williams finishes. Somebody needs to come help Kate Martin with the basketball. And now Gabby Marshall looks back. A 10-0 LSU run. Clark turned it over just two times in the Sweet 16 as three turnovers over the last few possessions here. Slight difference game in shot clock. Clark goes right around Van Lith. It ends up with Martin, her three, short. Williams the rebound, and that will do it for the first. Kim Mulkey fired up. Holly Rowe shots with her. In a moment, after a hot start from Iowa. Two steals. She's impacting everything right now. Thank you, Holly. As Clark forces up a three, cannot hit it. And another rebound from Reese, her sixth. Solid defense. Haley Van Lith on Clark on that possession. Van Lith faced off against Clark in the Elite Eight last year as a member of Louisville, but did not have defensive assignment. Her three is good. Iowa in a man-to-man -man for the first time on that position, and Clark gets clawed on the screen. An eight-point LSU lead. Clark through traffic, finds a bolter. She hits a big one for the Hawkeyes. Meanwhile, A.J. Edinger getting minutes for Iowa. So Stolke and... Addy O'Grady on the bench. Ediger in for Iowa. Williams mid-range, no. And a bolter the rebound for Iowa. LSU able to hit some perimeter shots to get Iowa out of the zone, but also so Iowa can rebound and back out better. Clark pumps it. Ediger gets denied! A full-fisted rejection from Angel Reese. Angel Reese has made an impact in a big way on the defensive end. We've seen a couple of seals, and there she helps, and then comes over, gets the swat. She is having an incredible night thus far. Defensively, offensively, on the glass. Here's the falter. Needs help. Tried to force it to Stolke. It wasn't there. A falter back after it, and the possession arrow belongs with LSU. Hey, catch an NBA Wednesday doubleheader on ESPN. Coverage begins at 7 with countdown, and then 7.30 Eastern. Thunder Celtics. Cash Suns follows that. NBA Wednesday at 7.30 and 10 Eastern on ESPN. Yeah. Van Lith, Williams, Reese, Johnson, Morrow, the five LSU. LSU plays seven, that's it. Williams gets inside, but traveled before she finished. And Michaela Williams with her third turnover. And then in, in man to man, I was going to be challenged to stay in a stance and stay between the quicker offensive player and the basket. Clark getting off the ball here. Clark trying to come back to it. Clark shakes Van Lith into the lane, gets fouled by Reese. And then Angel Reese takes a tumble afterwards. As Caitlin Clark is to go to the line to shoot two and oh no. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Keep in mind, Angel Reese hurt her ankle in the SEC tournament. And you just hope that this is not going to affect Angel Reese and LSU tight. Clark misses the first free throw. So there was the foul from Reese with the body down low, and then it's afterwards when she stumbles and hurts the ankle. As Clark goes one for two at the line. 
Now, we see Aaliyah Del Rosario come into the game for LSU. She played incredibly well in the Sweet 16. Chris, great size and strength on the interior. Playing against the size of UCLA in that matchup. Here's Morrow. Morrow traveled. And you can see Kim Mulkey saying, we got a step turning the ball over, and that is not what anybody wants to see. Angel Reese going back, although it looks like she's getting she's a get on the bike. All right. Here, Clark bounces. Stokey can't finish. A good setup from Clark, and Stokey unable to cash in. Van Lith out to Williams. As LSU awaits the return of Reese, here's Williams shimmying, taking, can't hit. Stokey a rebound. An opportunity for Iowa. Clark knocked out of bounds by Del Rosario. No, they'll say it last hit Iowa. And Caitlin Clark has made far too many careless passes in this first half. And it's not going to be an over the top pass there to Silky just because Del Rosario has great size. She is 6'6. Six, six. Bounce it to her? Yeah. Or fake it. <laughs> Go the other way. <laughs> you have three turnovers from Clark as well as a five second violation. Start a game red hot. Johnson, a play on. Johnson evades, dishes, Morrow can't finish. Nice breakdown from Flaugier Johnson. And no offensive rebound for LSU since Angel Reese left the game. I was started getting stops, but they've had more trouble scoring. Solke can't finish, but gets the foul. Del Rosario whistle for it. Now Angel Reese is a hobble to the scores table and check back in for her team. One of the things Angel Reese talked to us about the other day, Rebecca, she said, you know, last year we were able to play so free and easily. No one expected anything from us. This year, it's been a harder path because we all have felt the expectations as defending champs and obviously as a team that gets a whole lot of attention as well. Two-point game. Six straight points from Iowa. Here's Reese. We're going to go to work on Stolke. Reese flips it up in. She is unstoppable tonight. Such a difference for LSU offensively in their quarter court offense when Angel Reese has been on the floor in those two possessions when she was. LSU plus 10 in the paint. Clark gets it off to Stolke. Stolke wheels inside and finishes over Reese. Stolke a couple of foot throws a layup. Does that start to unlock her? Reese given space, will take, can't hit. Rebound and a foul on Johnson going over the back. That'll be number one on Flaugier Johnson. Angel Reese at 6'3", just great patience. Sees three different defenders coming at her, keeps it simple. Just goes over her left shoulder, fish with the right hand. You have to have patience when you know a double or triple is coming. Here's Stolke, center of the lane, draws two, throws it to corner, a folder, can't hit. And Williams, the rebound for the Tigers. Morrow, looking to take Martin. A falter comes with perfectly timed double, knocked out of bounds, stays here. Well, Sydney, a falter, Lisa Blue calls Chicago tough. Play the chip on her shoulder. She's done such a nice job since entering the starting lineup for the end of Molly Davis. Williams. Over to Johnson. Johnson takes and hits. Flege Johnson has been spectacular the entire postseason. It's been a little bit of a slower start here early in this game than we saw in the Sweet 16 matchup. Iowa started in for 14, two for 10 since. Here's Stolke looking to take Reese. Stolke gets denied by Reese. Williams thought about taking. 
Dumps it down. Reese surrounded. Reese unable to finish. Rebound. Knocked around. And a Volter tags it down for Iowa. In the backcourt, Martin gets it ahead. Iowa with numbers. Here's Clark. Catch. Fire. And hit. Van Lith can't answer. Long rebound, Williams. Another chance here. Van Lith will fire again. No. And a little frustration from Flage Johnson at the shot. Here's Clark in a crowd. Finds Marshall. Back iron, no. Williams rebound. LSU putting pace now. Fion two. Williams to Van Lith. Van Lith misses. Williams. Can't hit either. This look a little exhausted at this, this pace. pace. Yes. Clark. No. LSU should smartly walk the ball off the floor. This has been frenetic. Players a little bit tired right now. And Lisa Blura told us she was surprised when she went to Synergy to learn. LSU actually plays at a faster pace than Iowa. Unstoppable on the inside, and who's looking good on the outside? No surprise. Kate Lindbark. Right now, you can get any large pizza for twelve dollars from Pizza Hut. Any pizza, any crust, twelve dollars. That means meat lovers, supreme, or create your own with any toppings. Just what? The ball is wet. Yeah, it's a little wet. We got to dry it off. Now it's good to go. Three minutes to go in this first half. And oh, I think it's still wet. How did it get wet? Kim Mulkey wants to know. Caitlin drills it. She says, ooh, I don't want that in my hand. <laughs> Look at her face. Here we go. Clark looking to evade Van Lith. Van Lith has hung nicely in this second quarter after struggling in the first. Clark around the screen. Directing traffic. Clark into the lane, throws it off, Reese out of bounds, and seven to shoot. The right idea, Ken Clark was trying to wrap it around Reese and deliver it to Edit or to O'Grady. So it's Marshall, a falter, Martin, O'Grady, and Clark for Iowa as Martin comes back in for the Hawkeyes. That's going to have to be deliberate on their screen. They had a hard time getting it in the last time on the under out of bounds. Here's a falter on the drive. Falter lays in, and this game is tied as Marshall nearly comes up with a steal. Second time she's got her hand on an inbounds pass tight. And then he fouls Flage Johnson on the other end and helps her right up. Kate Clark tells her teammates to attack and try to get to the rim and draw fouls. No foul drawn, but certainly getting to the rim by a falter. Well, we saw a falter, a big go-ahead bucket in the final minutes of that second-round win against West Virginia. Not afraid to take it to the hoop. Deflected into the arms of Reese. Reese will take. Can't hit. A rebound. Morrow goes over. Martin leaves it short. And that is not for the back. She nope. is able to jump and reach without causing a foul. Here's Martin. And O'Grady bounced to Marshall, out to a falter. Here's Clark, fires it in. O'Grady, a deep catch, can't pop it home. Under two minutes to go in this first half. Here's Van Lith driving it inside and gets the whistle against Clark, who picks up her first. Ellie Van Lith insisting contact. Great decision by Haley Van Lith to attack. Try to get this foul called. Yikes. I'll say, I think this game has been very, very well officiated. Yes. I don't necessarily agree that that was a foul. And Van Lith rounds in the first free throw. 
Not all contact is a foul. Yep. You can have marginal contact if it doesn't make a big impact, then it is not a foul. If it's marginal contact, it does impact the play significantly, that is a foul. Correct, Professor. Here's a falter. Gathering inside, could not get it go. A falter knocks it away, but Moro collects for LSU. In the corner, wide open, Williams, no, and O'Grady the rebound. Clark running. Clark eyes up behind the back through the lane, lays it in. Seventeen points from Caitlin Clark. Game tied at 41. Morrow wants it, takes it. No. O'Grady is fouled by who? By Reese. And that is going to be number two on Angel Reese. Angel Reese is relentless on the offensive glass. And you could see her say, get me the ball. And when they have tonight, it has resulted in good things. Here's Clark weaving through traffic. Peaks of eyes at home. Iowa back in front. Ellis, you has missed its last nine shots. Johnson ends that. And back to what Angel Reese was saying. There's the phrase of basketball, feed beast. And there's been no better beast for LSU today than Angel Reese. She does need touches when she's on the floor. Tie 43, 10 second difference game. Shot clock. Caitlin Clarkson get away to Addison O'Grady because she wants to wind this down, not give LSU a lot of time. Here's Clark. Clark bounces away. Five shoot, shovels back. O'Grady short. Seven seconds left in the half. Johnson on the attack, spinning and finishing. What a move from Flaugier Johnson. And what a half for these young women. Flaugier Johnson has been spectacular at times, including this one, the move, the finish, beautiful basketball. Let's send things over to Holly Rowe. Caitlin, your team got out to such a hot start, and then a depth. How did you... Second half action in Albany. A trip to the Final Four at stake. Clark. We're trying to redirect a pass. Clark. Oh, my! From Schenectady. Here's Johnson, who gets fouled. And if it's Stolke, it will be her third. And it is... Number three on Hannah Stuckey. Caitlin Clark here, Haley Van Lith right there, but you're never right there when it's Caitlin Clark. The bench is liking the three. We know the stardom of Clark is unlike anything we have seen. The thing that's at the base of the stardom is her intoxicating range. And when you look at her average three-pointer made, it's over 26 feet. The three-point line is just over 22 feet. 56% of her three are from 25 plus as Johnson hits both free throws. We simply have never seen a player take that many threes from distance and hit them at that kind of a percentage. Here's Martin cutting through the lane, gets blocked but fouled. Flaugier Johnson gets whistled for the personal, helps up Martin. And free throws here for Martin as we send things over to Holly Rowe. Listening into Kim Mulkey's huddle right before the team to the floor, she talked about X's and O's, where they want to defend, but at the very end, she looked right at Angel Reese. Are you okay? Are you okay? How's that ankle? The right ankle, it, ankle is sore. Angel did change her shoes at half. I'm assuming there's some extra tape under that right ankle, and then her teammates tried to hype her up. You're a dog. You're a dog. You're fine. You got the summer to get better. They want her to gut it out <laughs> right now. And Angel Reese has not yet said what she is going to do after this year. She could come back to LSU for another season, or she could enter WNBA draft. I'm sure there are a lot of WNBA GMs watching tonight hoping for the latter.
She did say she would make the decision right after her last game. Yep, she said she'll tell her coach first and everybody else. Johnson, back iron, no, and Brady the rebound. Reese has two fouls. Clark gets it ahead of Fulter. Can't let in. Great job by Johnson to contest it. Iowa has stayed in this man-to-man -man throughout the course of this third quarter. It's a much more effective. Nice cut from Johnson and Vine from Reese. Defense for them in the first half. Here's Martin running to the floor and lays it in. And a dime from Clark. How about the pace of this game? It has been remarkable. Up and down, back and forth. Van Lith cuts through. Gets stripped out of bounds. It'll stay with LSU. Hey, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Final Four being Saturday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on TBS. For more information, go to NCAA.com. We know NC State women and men are in. You could end up with the UConn men and women. Connecticut will play Juju Watkins and USC following this game on ESPN tonight. Dan Lith left alone. No, missed it badly and in the rebound. Dan Lith now one for four from three. She hit her first attempt. Clark wheels round, evades Van Lith and drains it. My goodness. Left three like no other. Despite about feet on that jumper, but it's also her get ahead passing how she sees the floor and can deliver the basketball. And yeah, then it's this again. Haley Van Lip. Those were two really good contests. Just great shots to Caitlin Clark. Well, has those and take them personally. Uh, six point Iowa lead. They led by nine early. Then LSU built an eight point lead. Iowa came back to tie it at the half. See the numbers against Man and D. This game for Iowa. Paul was three. Missed it badly. And it's a bounce to Iowa. The last tier, Poa comes in for Van Lith. Now, one more thing on Haley Van Lith. She got an IV because she's been so sick before that UCLA game. That's how sick she was. Clark! She's possessed! An 8-0 run. And a whole lot of distance from Caitlin Clark. Reese can't swill it in. Johnson, what an offensive rebound from Flage Johnson. Good things happen when Angel Reese touches the ball inside. Draws so much attention. Clark finds O'Grady. O'Grady gets smothered by Johnson. Here comes Flage Johnson, who has the last 10 LSU points. Williams, mid range. No. Reese, the tip won't go. Long rebound. Who's going to get to it? It's Johnson for LSU. Johnson giving it up. Reese wants a tuck. Gets one. Morrow in mid range. Uh uh. And Martin the rebound as Clark slowed her team down. Clark, 6 of 11 from three. Clark will fire. No. Long rebound in the corner. Saved by Morapoa. And here come Tigers. They dump it down for Reese. Reese bodies in. Denied by O'Grady. Goes back at it. And a foul on the second attempt before the bucket will put Reese at line. The distance, the distance, the distance on the Caitlin Clark freeze. It's just ridiculous. I can see Clark starting to emote a little more, feeling it in this third quarter. Has hit three threes already in the frame. Reese makes the second. Angel Reese at 73.5% from the line this year. Here's Clark racing inside. 
Behind the back to O'Grady. Martin looking to shed last year. Poa. A fault. The crossover. Gets it to O'Grady. Now to Marshall. Marshall gets fouled by Williams. Her first. Really nice. Just a little head and shoulder fake by Gabby Marshall. Gets Williams to bite. Gets inside. The foul drawn as well. Winner of this game will play the winner of USC UConn in the Final Four. That game follows this on ESPN. A falter can't lay it in. Good contest for Morrow. An opportunity for LSU here. Johnson. With a shake, Martin Johnson can't lay it in. And the rebound to Iowa. Here's Johnson, and she fouled Clark as Clark lays it in. But the foul was long before that. There are so many players on the floor here tonight that are simply delightful to watch. Flaugé Johnson, certainly one of them. And that is a big third foul on Flaugé, who has had a tremendous tournament. Is so effervescent. Kim Mulkey talks about her as just a joyful person and the energy that her team gets from the joy that Johnson plays with. Who is also a recording artist for Rock Nation? It's deflected and stays here. Nice hands, Angel Reese. That's interesting, by the way. Yeah. Flaugé truly can do it all. But right now on the bench with three fouls. Here's Clark shaking three and a foul here against Poa. And that is going to be Poa's third. So you have three on Poa, three on Johnson. When you're trying to fight through all the screens to chase Caitlin Clark, it just put players in tough positions defensively where they can foul. Here's Martin. Clark again coming off the screens. Clark steps back, fires. You bet! Her 7 3 of the game. Reese trying to save it and does. Poa, no. Rebound, Martin. Clark from the logo. No. Caitlin Clark passes Taylor Robertson most career threes in Division I history. Reese can't lay it in. Morrow, no. Another chance. Won't go. Smart. Kate Clark tipping it out when she can't corral herself. Clark's wide open. Fearock didn't see her. And then a kick ball. This is sensational. Just can't avoid talking about length. Pan in her face, drains it anyway. What a pass, and Martin trying to save it. Van Lith has it for LSU. Here's Van Lith racing down the floor, and it's out of bounds as Clark got a hand up. And I know it's tough because Flavie Johnson has two fouls. But I just wonder if at some point LSU is going to put her defensively on Caitlin Clark. All season long, she has been the player who has taken the best and the toughest perimeter defensive yeah. assignment. And while we started 6 of 8, is 0 of 7 since. Remember, she also injured her ankle. It's Clark. Will she pull up? Finding a falter lays it in. Good decision there from Clark. The lead is 11 for Iowa. This game was high at the half. Reese going to work. Can't finish. Gets fouled. And Angel Reese is going to go to the line. Caitlin Clark just manipulates everyone. She comes down the floor. No, she doesn't want to attack the shot blocker. Hesitation and delivers the basketball. You talk about her assists a lot, Rebecca. Ben Lober has done an unbelievable job tracking this all season and feeding us this information. Just how many assists come in transition for Caitlin? Ben on the Iowa staff there. Video guy, he just keeps track of this, and it's it's just incredible to get ahead passer that she is. Reese misses both the falter right on cue. It's denied. 
Claude Johnson chipping out of the gym for that rejection. And then immediately turns, gathers her team, is the voice in the hull. This young woman is only a sophomore. Elite athlete, elite basketball player. An elite leader as a sophomore. Here's Clark. Johnson are now. Clark looking to shake Johnson. Clark into the lane. Lefty finish won't go. Sets up Martin. Too strong. And the rebound, Michaela Williams for LSU. Tigers have missed 13 of their last 14 shots. Williams can't hit. The box out for Martin. And it's off the foot of Morrow out of bounds to Iowa. It looks like Martin took a shot, maybe to the ear. Cade Martin about as tough as they come. Lisa Bluter calls her the glue to this Iowa team playing in her 161st career game at Iowa. No doubt destined to be a coach whenever her playing days are done. There's quite a few Iowa fans here in Albany. Quite a few LSU fans as well. Electric atmosphere. Martin on the drive. The spin floater is good. Smart. Attack player with three fouls. Just a smart play. 13-point lead for Iowa. Their largest of the game. They're on a 15-3 run. And Van Lift throws it away. Angel Reese needs a touch inside, Ryan. Angel Reese needs a touch inside. Last tier Poa will check back in for Van Lith. You see Angel Reese, last made field goal, 621 mark of the second quarter. Dealt with the ankle after that. Also has not got the same consistency of touches as... The officials are going to go to the monitor. The previous play is under review for an unobserved. Well, they're going to take a look and see if there was an unobserved act on the previous play. Well, let's observe it. <laughs> it won't be unobserved much longer. <laughs> So this was that play, I mean, there's nothing. Methodically work your way back if you're LSU. Kayla Clark has outscored Tigers this quarter. As Martin gets stripped by Reese, and there you go. There's a stop for LSU. Reese running and finishing. Right on cue, partner. They are so good when they get in the open floor or get offense from defense. Here's Clark. Will fire away, miss it short, and a foul going against a falter as LSU comes up with another stop. Angel Reese gets a touch on the ball and then beats almost everyone down. The floor shows her hands so her teammate knows where to, where to deliver the pass. I also wonder if that review allowed a little reset moment for LSU in a quarter that has been all Iowa. Very good point. Here's Johnson playing with three fouls. Around the re-screen, mid-range jumper, too strong. Rebound, Morrow in the put back. She was sandwiched. How did Anissa Morrow come up with that offensive board? So strong on the interior. Martin's three, won't go. Opportunity LSU, not a great shot there from Martin. Here's Van Lith across her body. Can't finish it. Reese amongst the trees. No. Another chance. Uh-uh. But Judson, yes. And here comes LSU. Clark to Martin. Gets denied, and it lets hit her. Floje Johnson exploding. I know Iowa wants to play with pace, but the last few possessions, beautiful block by Flage John. The last few possessions, Iowa has played like a team that is down. Quick, quick shots. Holly? 
Quaje Johnson has turned herself into an elite basketball player this season through relentless hard work. She has three different workouts a day. She gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning, gets a pre-practice workout, an after-practice workout. This is a young woman who has made herself this kind of basketball with unrelenting schedule. Never what you're seeing tonight should surprise you because she's been doing it all season. Oh, what a pass! Lark to O'Grady for the fish. Down the other end, Reese makes the catch. Here's last tier Poa, big three. No, Morrow again, and a foul. And this one is against Anissa Morrow. Best get ahead passer since Subert. You're seeing her in 22 white, and she just has her eyes up, always leads her player. They never have to stop and wait for the basketball. And on this end, Anissa Mora was just trying to get offensive position. Gave a little nudge in the back of the Iowa player. It's the foul call. And both teams in the bonus. So they will shoot free throw the rest of the way in this third with 44 seconds to go. That's Morrow's first personal. A full turn. That line, 84%. Knocks down the first. You know, a huge defensive play a couple possessions ago by Caitlin Clark with the initial knock away and then eventually the steal before the gorgeous pass at a time where LSU was building momentum. Yeah, it happened really active hands. A falter hits both. Kate Martin back in. Stolke, now this is interesting. Stolke will check in. She has sat most of this quarter with two fouls. Checking in on the defensive end. I'd go right at her, especially since he's guarding Angel Reese because you want to get Angel Reese the basketball. Reese battling with Stolke. Van Lid throws away. Yeah, Kim Mulkey frustrated by a couple of these passes from Haley Van Lid. The transfer from Louisville was number one transfer in the portal after last season to a Final Four a couple seasons ago with Jeff Wall, Louisville team. The falter and Stokey back on the bench now. Five second difference game and shot clock as Iowa will try and wind this down. And leave limited time for LSU, if any. Clark waits. Five second difference. Game in shot clock. Clark. Five to shoot. Clark through the lane. Can't lay it in. Reese the rebound. Five seconds left. Johnson with time. Johnson evades. Waits. Boys. Can't hit. And that'll do it for the third. Iowa outscores LSU. Joel's her third three of the night. Clark thought about taking. Gets it back from O'Grady. Van Lith on Clark. Clark around her. Feed O'Grady. Mid-range won't go. O'Grady goes around Reese for the foul. And that will be a second personal on O'Grady. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for a 90 NCAA championships. LSU shot just five for 26 in that third, but they start the fourth with a made three. And now touch for Reese. Reese trying to find an angle. Finds Morrow. Morrow will lay it in. What a start to the fourth for Tigers. Anissa Moore was terrific, catching at the high post area, driving to the basket, especially when she can go right. Clark ditches, O'Grady gets fouled, and that will be number three on Angel Reese. Anissa Moore was such a great compliment to Angel Reese because Angel draws so much attention on the block and then can pass it back out. And more a quick, strong, good finisher inside. Well, you talk about the way Reese can pass, and we see that whether it's passing out of the post or big to big. I had a WBA coach text me this week talking about how she marvels at the basketball IQ of Reese. We asked her about that day, and she said, you have to remember, most of my life, I was a point guard. Up to eighth and ninth grade, I was a point guard, and then come out of high school, I was a wing. So I always see my teammates and know 
where on the floor they operate best. I'll tell you what, I'm always really impressed with the player who can put her contact lens back in without the salient solution. <laughs> O'Grady hits the second after missing the first. We can't mess up that vision. No, no. O'Grady has been very good tonight in her minutes. Gets a breather. Stolke back in, playing with three fouls. Reese working inside, can't flip it in. Clark the rebound. Here comes Clark, eyes up, wheels it back. Now Martin looking to attack. Martin lays it in with the left hand. The last time down for LSU, I liked Angel Reese on the same side of floor as Michaela Williams. You cannot help off of Michaela Williams. Oh, nice pass. Williams into Moro. Yeah, great direct entry right into Anisa Moro. Same thing. You cannot help off of Michaela Williams. Moro with 12 points, 12 rebounds, playing in her first Elite Eight game. Clark again. Her eighth three of the night. <laughs> what is Haley Van Lith supposed to do? She goes over the screen, lunges at Caitlin Clark. Any other player in the country, it's great defense. We want her taking that shot. Well, Caitlin Clark set the record for most career assists in the NCAA tournament with that pass to Kate Martin. As Van Liff gets fouled, passing to Mika Johnson. And Liff will go to the line, send things over to Holly. Well, talking to Kim Clark, she says she just never gets nervous. It's just crazy that she's able to perform what she is. We asked her how she slept last night. She's like, I slept great. She said the only problem today has been sitting around all day waiting for this game to get here. She just has the calm demeanor. She has admitted that at times this year, the pressure to perform has gotten to her a lot of people driving to see her buying tickets she does want to perform well but she does not get nervous right there's that delineation between feeling pressure but not being nervous well tonight she scored 34 thus far nine assists as well then lift his two big free throws a point iowa lead clark curling inside in traffic last hit stolke Good hands for Reese and not the right decision from Clark. Exactly. Clark could have definitely jump stopped right there and put a little flutter up on the rim. And that might be the move that gets developed more at the next level for Clark. Here's Lajay Johnson. Lost the handle. Martin and gets fouled by Morrow. Number two on Morrow and a big turnover there from LSU. And there's been a couple of turnovers. Oh, it's Kate Barnes going to give us some glitter that was on the floor. Just glad it wasn't gum. Yep. Have you ever been handed a piece of glitter mid-game before? <laughs> or <laughs> confetti, I should say? <laughs> no. Well, you just were. Oh, yeah. At the answer is yes. <laughs> there's Clark. Another deep one. No. Short. Martin soars in. Wins it. Stolke backs it out. I want another chance here. Clark racing around. Throws it off a of foot. It stays with Iowa. Off a of foot, but not off a of falter. Oh, nicely done. You said the difference in offensive rebounding there. LSU 18 old boards in this game. Clark finds Martin. Martin digs in and lays it home. And assist for Clark. Martin with 15 points. Morrow won't go. Rebound, Clark. Here comes Iowa. Clark will take out. Maybe run a little more time. Now Funks Martin. Oh my, what a rejection from Angel Reese. Caitlin Clark, you see her eyes where she wants to feed the ball. Martin right there. Flaute Johnson can only do so much because she has three fouls. And then Angel Reese impactful again on the defensive end. Here's Marshall. Iowa going to let some more time wind. Clark sizing up Van Lith. Will drive it. 
Stops over Reese, can't bank it in. Wanted a foul to get it. LSU with numbers now. Jay Johnson on the bench for the moment for the Tigers. Get the ball to Michaela Williams. She's the best direct entry passer. And takes the three. Can't hit, was online and cut back iron. Martin left alone. Back iron, no, and it will go out of bounds to LSU. You can see Lisa Bluter maybe a little frustrated with the early shot, but Martin's so open. Yeah. And, and we've seen it multiple times on the offensive end for LSU. Simple, simplicity. Get Michaela Williams a touch on the side, direct entry into one of your posts, and let them go to work. Reese, one for 12 after starting six of eight. Remember, injured her ankle after that. What a pass. There you go. Poa feeding Morrow. Morrow now with 14 points. Mark behind the back. Nearly lost the handle. Digs in. Can't finish. Gets it back and slings it out. A kick here. Last here, Poa on left side of the floor. Just a beautiful bounce pass. But you see the spin on it? That's what makes Moro be able to catch it easily and finish. Eight-point Iowa lead. Here's Clark. Clark pulls up another deep one. Is good. She's simply ridiculous. And a steal on this end. A falter comes away with it. And now there'll be a held ball. There will possession. Arrow belongs with Iowa. Clark, nine threes, 37 points, under five minutes away from the final four. Caitlin Clark once again dancing with the basketball, seeing it go through the net. What does it take to achieve? Really, really well played basketball game so far on both ends. And so much has been made and hyped about sort of bad blood that might exist between these players. There's been terrific sportsmanship on both sides during this game tonight. Here's Martin. Martin trying to get it back to Clark and does. Now Flange Johnson finally on Caitlin Clark. Clark. They're switching everything now with Clark. Here's Falter. Five to shoot out to Martin. Martin leaning and hitting. That's a huge shot from Kate Martin after Iowa used the entire shot clock. And we'll see if LSU continues to do what they just did. Switch on every ball screen that involves Caitlin Clark. Here's Johnson. It's a traffic. She is such a tough finisher. Just fluid. She flew it. 18 for Fauge Johnson. We shot it around 60% from the floor in the tournament. Yes, I like this. I like Fauge Johnson as the primary on Caitlin Clark. Size length. Took a long time for LSU to make that adjustment. Here's Clark backing away from Johnson. Oh my. She can't hit. Flag down, but out of bounds was a falter. And it's to be LSU ball. Caitlin Clark won a foul, but there wasn't a foul there, and it's worth repeating. We said it early in the game. This has been an outstanding performance by the officials. Got her a little bit on the hand there. Nothing down low. Here's Johnson, 320 to go. What a steal. Gabby Marshall gets fouled, and that's number four on J. Johnson. And Marshall took a shot. We've seen Gabby Marshall have huge moments at the end of big games, blocking shots. She is pint size, and she is block blocking shots. Here, she's able to jump and elevate and get this steal and then the foul. Look at that. Just great job. Goes up and snatches the basketball and all. Unlucky for Flaugé Johnson. Was that foul on her? Confirming whether it was on Johnson or Williams, it was on Johnson fourth. Here's Clark. Clark going to drive it through the lane. And she traveled. 
And you could see, now she may have wanted to run more clock in this instance, but that's the part of her game that still is going to come along, stopping and taking that little floater. Van Lip dumps it down. Morrow finds Reese. Can't finish it. Rebound. Reese gets fouled. And Angel Reese is going back to the line with 2.50 to go in the fourth. Her second dump is ridiculous, Angel Reese. And it's one of the things that makes her such an elite offensive rebounder. She doesn't get it the first time. She can quickly bounce back up off the floor and get the second. That is number four on Hannah Stolke as Reese misses the first. She is two for seven from the line tonight. Big time box out here for Iowa. Reese just under 74% on the season. Got the second. 2.50 to go. Iowa leads by 10. 37 points, 10 assists, 7 rebounds from Caitlin Clark. Trying to take Iowa across the finish line and to the final four. Here's Sulky. Back to Clark. Sulky lays it in. Plus the foul. Jason Sudeikis all smiles. A 12-point Iowa lead. Simple, beautiful basketball. Pass, get it back, pass again. Stolke misses the free throw. That was number four on Reese. So four on Johnson, four on Reese. Van Lift can't hit. Not a great look. Haley Van Lift, two for eight from the floor. Crowd starting to sense it here for Iowa. Clark has tied an NCAA tournament record with nine made threes today. Going for number 10. Can't get it to drop. Reese the rebound. Still time for LSU. Here's Williams lunging into the paint and squeezing it in. And now LSU will take a timeout. They have just one remaining. And we know Kim Olke, she will, even if she doesn't have any timeouts to play with, they'll still take them after eight buckets in these situations. Well, you would expect here that they will apply some full court on along, and the crowds have continued to grow, and the tension has as well. She feels that Martin. Looked like she got fouled. No call. Nearly turns it over, and now they do. Poa comes up with a steal. Here is Reese. Reese leans in, and it's a charge. And number five on Angel Reese. Does Martin own that real estate before the foul? I don't know that she does, right? That is a tough fifth foul on Angel Reese, who walks off for perhaps the final time in her collegiate career. She has said she will make her decision after her final game whether to go into the WBA as a lottery pick or come back another season. She's hoping for a comeback in this game. Iowa leading by 10 and in trouble here. Clark has to get it across. Finds Martin, who waits. Now lays it in. Van Litz three, won't go. Marshall the rebound. It's getting late for LSU and a foul on Sulky at half court. And that is number five. Whoa, that is a costly foul. Did last year Poe step in and take that charge? Because she's elite at that in the court, court but to do it at midcourt? Didn't even step in. Oh, yes, she did. 
And Stokey's not even looking. That's just unlucky right there. She's running down the floor, but Poa sees it and establishes herself. Abby play from Poa and door back open for the moment for LSU. Still a lot of work to be done. Down 12, 120 to go. Coming up next, USC UConn. Poa dumps it in. Johnson into the lane, curls it up and off. Rebound to O'Grady. Martin has it. Martin in trouble. Has it knocked away by Poa, and then Martin is fouled by Van Lith. Iowa in the bonus, so free throws here for Kate Martin. Reese's night is done. The question is, is there season as you see the smile start to creep onto the face of Caitlin Clark? Martin hits both. The lead is 14, largest of the night for Iowa. Williams spins and gets a whistle against Marshall. And Michaela Williams will go to the line to shoot two. Ideal for LSU, you get to the free throw line, you want to make both free throws, but it also allows you to more easily set up that full court pressure that's been a little bit problematic for Iowa. Tim Mulkey and Lisa Luter both talked at length about the meaning of this game to sport of women's basketball, something they've spent their lifetime in as players and now coaches. They both said their only regret was the meeting happening now and not later in the tournament. One of these teams goes home tonight. The other heads to Cleveland. Iowa on the brink. Bounce tight for Angel Reese, who has fouled out. Here is a falter, fouled by Michaela Williams. A 12-point Iowa lead with 58.4 seconds to go in the fourth. It's been so interesting sitting down with Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark and the appreciation they have for this game, for this stage. And they both have also talked about players who came before them and saying, yes, this has now taken off and taken this seismic leap. But if it wasn't for the generations who have worked so hard to establish women's basketball, we wouldn't have been in position to land at these meteoric cuts. Williams hits the three, and now LSU will take its final timeout. LSU falls in second. Reese had a torrid start to this game. Struggled. At so much attention around this rematch after the emotion last season. LSU's national championship win over Iowa as Clark is fouled and goes back to the line. 41.9 to go in this fourth. Big smile from Brent and Ann, Caitlin's brothers here as well, though she told us they've been reaching out to me and I've told them, just go find something to do in Albany. I'm staying in my room and just waiting for the game. By the way, good luck finding something to do in Albany. <laughs> Clark hits both, 39 for Caitlin Clark. Here's Van Lith. Poa's three, and wow, Poa nails the three. And is fouled by Clark, who immediately says, my fault. Not a wise foul there from Casey Clark, and Poa chance for four. It was on hand at the end of it. Great job by Poa to keep her concentration, finish, and then Caitlin, my bad. I think everybody knew it was her bad. Yeah. Poa 
Trying to complete the four-point play. Does not. Rebound loose, and it's out of bounds to LSU. Still a little work to be done here with 33.8 to go. No surprise, this is an LSU team that continues to fight. Here's Van Lith. They need it. They don't have it. Morrow can't finish. Johnson does with 26 seconds to go. It's an eight-point game, and Lisa Bluter will take a timeout, a five-point possession there for LSU. Caitlin Clark in this 40-point night. LSU, though, has done a really good job of fouling quickly, not letting Iowa take too much time off the clock. 41-point triple-double. She has a 40-point game tonight. 40 points, 12 assists, 7 rebounds. 13th career 40-point game for the all-time leading scorer in Division I history. Johnson launches, can't hit. Rebound Morrow gets blocked. Underneath, a falter is fouled, and now it is all cosmetic. Free throw off, rebound Johnson up the floor. Her three is good. It's 7.9 seconds to go, and now Iowa will take its final timeout. Iowa calls full timeout. In a rematch with LSU, Clark evade. That will do it. This time, it's Iowa. The Hawkeyes are headed back to the Final Four. Galactic greatness from Caitlin Clark on display yet again. Four, 87 the final as Iowa ends LSU season here tonight in Albany behind an unforgettable performance from Caitlin Clark. She and Angel Reese exchange a hug and whisper. We await to see what.